Hello, it's Doris with Aldi Books, and I'm here for another video. I apologize for the um, haphazard nature that's going to be this edition. You know, the last couple days have been crazy. Um, with getting back to school, uh, remote learning, and all that jazz, let me tell you, friends, this virtual teaching, it ain't no joke. Anyway, my child is um, creating some nice ambiance in the background. He's working on his Dungeons and Dragons backstory for his next grand adventure. Um, and we're fast losing the lighting, so this is the best, the best I could do. I need to get myself one of those ring lights. Um, anyway. So, like I said, I'm, I'm quite frazzled and fractured and, you know, I mean, I'm whole, I'm whole, but um, let's just get to it. This is going to be, you know, random and casual, but you're used to that by now. So, these are some of the books that I loved, some novels that I loved in um, 2020. And hopefully tomorrow I will share the nonfiction because, whew. That stack of amazingness is huge. Anyway, jumping right in. First up, we have She Would Be King by Wayatu Moore. This is um, set in West Africa, Liberia, I believe. Um, kind of the founding of that nation and um, a little bit of magical realism. This was just amazing very inspiring and enlightening and just such a brilliant way to share uh, that moment in history and then uh, these ghosts are family by Maisie card this one I read for Caribbean um, and this cover like this is my favorite cover of the year this one I believe is um, a Jamaican yeah Jamaican family. Um, but I believe they have immigrated in Florida and New York. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's a little bit of magical realism in this one, too. And again, it just brilliantly weaves in moments in history. Um, and I would totally read both of these again uh, at, at some point because they were just so interesting. Um, yeah, these are in no particular order, order, by the way, for the most part. I will let you know if I think they are. Uh, and then The Air You Breathe by Francis de Pontes Pibles. Um, This one is, was it uh, Chile, I believe? Brazil, sorry, Brazil. Uh, and this one, it, it inspired me just now. Well, it, it just came to me now that this is probably what I would have liked to see in my brilliant friend. So uh, this one was two women and they're kind of like coming of age. They meet when they're girls and they're kind of competitive. Um, and, it, and it tells how that relationship evolves and interplays, but it was just so much more interesting and it pulled me in with the characters like all of the things that the other book did not do this one did for me in a similar vibe in the um, dynamics between two girls slash women so yes if, if you um, did enjoy my brilliant friend you might enjoy this one as well because it's similar uh, themes just with a different setting and this is very musical as well. So if you're into music, you might like that. Uh, and then The Last Thing You Surrender by Leonard Pitts Jr. Um, Leonard Pitts Jr. is uh, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and he also writes fabulous fiction. So this is very much historical fiction and it is set uh, on the backdrop of World War II and he just does a great job of showing uh, the African-American experience during that time period. Uh, this was just excellent. It's really hard hitting. Um, he doesn't pull any punches, but uh, this is great. 
I read this with Dee Dee from Brown Girl Reading. She does um, read soul lit read-alongs every year in February and then again in the fall. So she picks some really great reads. So loved that. And then um, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong. Oh my gosh. So um, these next three I think are my favorite uh, of the literary fiction. Uh, I adore literary fiction and these are the tops. This one would have been my pick for the book two prize. It didn't even make it to the final round, but I just thought this was absolutely stunning. Um, this is, it's, it's written in second person like uh, a son writing to his mother, but I kind of don't think it really was that. It, to me, it was more, I mean, yes, that's what it was, but it's more like how you have those conversations in your head with someone else that you never really share in real life. Like, so what you would say if you actually said it kind of thing. So yeah, again, this is uh, it's an immigrant story, uh, a mother and a son dynamic. Um, the son and his relationship with another um, boy slash man. Um, and I, I, I think the thing that really got to me was the drug aspect, the, the drug abuse that the friend goes through. And that was just so poignant uh, and, and personal, you know, with um, friends in my life. So, oh, this one really, really touched my heart. And then Lila by Marilyn Robinson. I love Marilyn Robinson's prose, her storytelling, the um, biblical connections that she makes, and um, just her insights on the politics of religion and society. Just gorgeous. So this one is written from the perspective of the wife. So in Gilead, which is the first one that she published, you hear about this country preacher that he's, you know, in his 60s and, you know, meets this younger woman and they end up married with a young son. And so he writes this letter to his son knowing that his little boy is not going to see, you know, that he's not going to see his little boy grow up because he's so much older. Um, so this one is the perspective of Lila, this woman that he ends up marrying. And um, you get her backstory on her homeless life and what that was like. Um, I think back during kind of the Great Depression era, maybe. But oh, this is just gorgeous, gorgeous story. And then... Um, the Lacuna by Barbara Kingsolver. I really enjoy Barbara Kingsolver's writing as well. And this one, oh, it's just brilliant. And it says so much about the times we're in. This is um, set during the, the McCarthy era, era with um, the communist scare here in the United States and how... Um, gossip and you know what what was said out in public you had to be so careful and then you have Frida Kahlo in the background well not in the background she's a main thread through this story um oh, I just was fascinated by this so this is another coming of age story I seem to love those this was um a young boy who you know, became a man and became an author through the course of the story and, you know, how that came about. And oh, I just, I just love those. So I guess, you know, you can tell by my gushing that these were, you know, probably my top three in the um, literary fiction, which is typically my favorite, favorite. Uh, so then these last four are kind of surprising well, not really, but surprising that there are so many of this style. These are like fantasy, like, yeah, crazy, right? So, Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, 
Um, this is one of those urban London fantasies that seem to be a genre of its, a micro genre, so to speak. Um, yeah, I think this is my favorite Neil Gaiman thus far. I've read um, The Graveyard Book, which is a middle grade that I've really enjoyed, and um, American Gods, which uh, took me longer to get through. It's a little bit slower paced for me, but, you know, I enjoyed the thinking in that one. But, yeah, this was a page turner, just an enjoyable one all the way through. And then uh, Hollow Pox, this is um, the Nevermore series. This is the third in a middle grade fantasy series set in a magical school. And this was just delightful. My favorite so far uh, in the series. And I just I hope it keeps getting better and better like it has thus far. But this was funny because it was an epidemic. <laughs> There was a, an epidemic, like, not a, a pandemic yet, but approaching. So, that was interesting, That the timing of that. I don't know how she managed that. And then Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. These are, this is a, a YA fantasy trilogy with um, kind of an, an Arabic Middle East spin to it. And, oh, this was just so exciting and you get so caught up in the characters uh, and I cannot wait until she announces where she's going next with her writing because she is really good so there's that and then this last one is just like the most surprising of all because not just is it fantasy and I'm gonna like gush about it but it's horror fantasy <laughs> what um the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires by grady hendrix so um trigger warnings this book is very gross very um uh, and ranges the spectrum of things that disturb you from bugs all the way through sexual abuse and murder so that being said it was very engrossing. Like, I'm not sure if that pun was intended, <laughs> but I was just mesmerized. And, you know, that would be great. That would be entertaining. But the thing that blew me out of the water, also, also, there was just like huge nostalgia for the early 90s. This book was set in the early 90s. And like, this nostalgia factor is real. If you were a teen, young adult during that time period, you will love that aspect of it. But the thing that blew me just out of the water is the literary factor of this book. It's just a really subtle but really brilliant allegory for um, racism in society. And yeah, it truly is. Uh, and how if you think it doesn't affect you because, you know, you're not of the minority race. That can come back to bite you in the butt, so to speak. And again, again, same thing with Paulo Pox. How relevant this book is to the times we're in right now is like crazy. But... I guess this has been going on for four years, so there's that. Anyway, those are my top um, fiction reads of 2020, and hopefully tomorrow um, I will get the nonfiction up, and those are very exciting. At least I think so. Um, so thanks for watching, and you know maybe I'll get a ring light one of these days. Chat with you soon. Bye.